Sanchez, who's coming from uh, Argentina, from uh, Instituto Baeseiro. And uh, the talk is about dissipative entanglement generation between superconducting qubits coupled to a resonator and driven by microwave qubits. So please, Maria. Okay, could you hear me? Okay, it's a pleasure to be here. I would like to thank the organizers, especially Cyprian and, uh, well, Christine for all the efforts and of course the local organizers and, and you, Joachim. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here and it's uh, my first uh, in-person talk after the pandemic, so I'm very happy to, to give it here. So um, I have something, okay. So what I'm going to tell you today is uh, I'm going to present a new protocol to generate entanglement in circuit QED architectures. Mainly I'm going to consider uh, two qubits which are coupled to a common mode of a resonator. And what we are going to use is two key ingredients. We are going to drive the qubits through the energy landscape and to use dissipation mainly due to photon losses in the cavity in the resonator in order to stabilize a entangled uh, state, a bell state. So this is a work had been done in collaboration mainly with my uh, student Sebastián Gallardo and my long-standing collaborator Daniel Dominguez. And along the years we have been benefit from the collaboration with former PhD students and also with Leandro Tosi who is in charge of the, uh, you know, the um, experiments that we are going to carry on on these devices. So, as I said, I'm going to start with, well, I don't know what's going on, sorry, but, okay. I'm going to start with a brief introduction to superconducting qubits and circuit QD. I don't need to give so many, uh, I mean, introduction here to the, to this audience. Then I'm going to mention some previous dissipative entanglement uh, generation protocols tested uh, previously in circuit QED architectures. And then I'm going to give you a brief introduction to landau senor stuker interferometry, which is the driving protocol that we are going to use to uh, generate uh, entanglement. And at the end, I'm going to follow, I mean, to focus on the system, our under study, which is, I mean, as I say, two driven qubits coupled to a resonator that experience photon losses. And I present the protocol and the summary at the end. So, I don't need to say that I mean, superconducting qubits are essentially no linear, I mean, quantum uh, resonators in which the two lowest levels conforms the qubit, okay? Uh, the nonlinearity comes from a Josephson junction, which behaves a nonlinear inductance. And of course, being a two level system, there is a general Hamiltonian to describe these uh, superconducting qubits in terms of, I mean, Pauli matrices. And in this case, the, what is called the tuning is an energy scale that will be externally controlled depending on the type of superconducting qubits that uh, we are taking into consideration. And the other energy scale is the gap, which is the energy separation between the two uh, levels of the qubit at zero detuning. For example, in the case of the flux qubit, the detuning is proportionally to the difference between the external apply flux to the device and the half a flux quantum, and it's also proportional to the supercurrent in such a way that if this uh, flux, uh, external flux is lower or higher than the uh, half a flux quantum, we can tune, for example, in a flux qubit, the uh, clockwise or anticlockwise supercurrents that consist on the uh, two um, state of the superconducting uh, computing basis. So, well, circuit QED, I mean, uh, also I don't need to, to give some uh, details, but for those of you what, uh, who are not uh, I mean in, the, in the subject, I, I'm essentially talking about uh, resonators, planar resonators, where that confine one or several modes of a quantized electromagnetic field. Typically, this is a um, central conductor that is uh, sandwiched between two um, rounded planes, and uh, the device can be designed in order to contain half over two modes 
of the uh, electromagnetic field, and the typical operating frequencies are between uh, 5 and 10 gigahertz. So what uh, we are going to consider in these architectures is a system of two coupled qubits. Uh, the, the qubits are, I mean, indeed not coupled directly, but I coupled to the same uh, mode of the resonator. In this is, I mean, essentially the typical architecture originally proposed in the, this preliminary, this uh, former work of the uh, Warraf uh, group, in which we have the qubits, the two qubits coupled to a transmission line resonator. And also, I mean, along the years, these architectures have been employed in several experiments. I have this uh, example, for example, here, which is a recent experiment in the group of uh, Gu. So I'm focused on entanglement generation. What is entanglement generation? Well, it's trying to generate and manipulate two qubit entangled states of this type, the typical Bell state that everyone I mean, knows between two qubits, okay? So uh, up to now, most of the strategies to generate entanglement had been based on unitary evolutions, adiabatic uh, quantum computation on even uh, gate quantum computation, applying two qubit gates in order to generate, for example, entangled states. But some years ago, people realized that, I mean, this type of, of, of protocols rely on unitary evolutions. And qubits are, I mean, uh, noise is always there. So people think that a way in which could be profit from noise is to engineer noise in a way that noise can be used uh, to establish an entangled state. There have been early proposals in the, f uh, I mean, in the field of uh, quantum optics by people like Sirar, Lestrade, or Soler. But the first implementation in circuit QED are, um, at least, uh, in the group of uh, Michel de Boré in Yale and in the group of uh, Siddiqui in Princeton. In both cases, they are considering uh, circuit QED architectures. In the case of the Yale group, they are um, two qubits coupled to a 3D resonator. And the resonator is continuously driven in a I mean, resonant uh, way, and they applied a sort of five uh, uh, drivings to the uh, uh, system in order to generate a highly, I mean, uh, excited state, and then by tuning the uh, decay rate, they can stabilize a uh, entangled state. There was the first proposal, this one, the first proposal to generate a sort of autonomous entanglement stabilization without needed uh, special feedback on, on the system. And this other proposal is also in circuit QD, but now they have a two qubit system coupled to both resonators. So they tune the couplings of the resonator, the asymmetry of the coupling of the resonators in order that dependent of the asymmetries, this, these are the gammas that in a way give the uh, coupling to the uh, resonators, they can stabilize even a singlet or a triplet state. But what I'm going to uh, emphasize here is that both protocols rely on driving the cavity, okay, weak and resonantly, and tuning the relaxation rates in order to stabilize an entangled state. What we are going to propose is a different protocol. We are not going to drive the cavity. We are going to drive the qubits with a microwave signal uh, beyond the resonant and weak driving regime that was uh, I mean, in generally uh, 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 used in the former approaches. So what we are going to do is to uh, do what is called the landau senor stuckler driving protocols in which the system can be uh, um, drive through the energy landscape with uh, strong signals and out of resonance signals, okay? There will be uh, signals that are modulated in amplitude and instead of being modulated in a way in, in frequency. And we are going to use dissipation by cavity photon losses in order to stabilize a two qubit entangled state. So a brief uh, flash on, I mean, what is landau center two qubit uh, interferometry? landau center uh, well, it's a <laughs> well-known uh, protocol when you have a two-level system, in two-level system that depends on an external parameter that uh, varies on time. If this parameter depends linearly on time, I mean, the parameter has a constant velocity, the Landau-Senner transition probability 
mm, between the low and high excited state is essentially an exponential on this parameter, which is delta, which is the ratio between the square of the energy gaps over essentially the velocity of the driving, okay? So in the adiabatic limit, there was no transitions, for example. But if you have an harmonic signal, that's the one that we are considering here, we have to uh, take into account that the avoided crossing acts as a sort of beam splitter for the uh, uh, occupation's uh, probabilities. Because as you apply an external signal, for example here, with some given amplitude, you have a first passage to the avoided crossings in which the um, occupation, I mean, the, the transmitted and reflected population interferes again at the second passage on the avoided crossing. So dependence on the phase is accumulated. You can have constructive or destructive interference. So in the regime that we are exploring uh, now, which is what is called the fast driving regime, in which the, the velocity of the, I mean, essentially the amplitude times the frequency of the signal is much larger than the square of the gap, the constructive interference can be shown to be this uh, equation here. These phases can be computed. These phases are the accumulated phases bef between the first and second passage uh, through the avoided crossings, and the other is the phase between the second uh, uh, passage and the end of the, of the protocol. So these phases can be computed, and the resonance condition is essentially, okay, give you when the difference energy difference between the two levels, which is, I mean, eh, mainly e epsilon naught in this case, it's a, an integer multiple of the frequency. That these are the resonance condition from landau senner stukeberg eh, interference. So at this resonance condition, you are going to have the maximum transfer of population. So the interferometric patterns um, can be shown in a, in a 2D plot the, as a function of the tuning and the amplitude of the driving. And you see the resonances and integer values of the uh, external uh, detuning, the DC detuning. But what is interesting is that these resonances are modulated by vessel functions. So if you set on uh, resonances, you see that you have modulation and you have nodes. You have points in which the transition probability is uh, suppressed. This points are the zeros of the vessel function. There's a fingerprint of this uh, uh, in type of interferometry. And this can, I mean, give you some uh, well-known phenomena like, for example, coherent destruction of tunneling at these points. So this has been, I mean, this is our I mean, simulation. And this is the experiment of, of the group of MIT, of the uh, group of uh, Will Oliver. So they propose this kind of spectroscopy to test the energy spectrum of the device for the Josephson flux qubits many years ago. And I mean, they propose this uh, kind of inter interferometry, as I said. If, if they locate the position of these resonances by adjusting the transition with a landau center probability, they can, they can extract, which is the gap at the energy spectrum and the position of the avoided crossing. So they can reconstruct the energy spectrum of the device from the Josephson flux qubit from this kind of uh, experiment. So they call this amplitude spectroscopy because instead of changing the frequency, they f have a fixed frequency, a non-resonant frequency, and then modulate the signal with the amplitude which in this case is this external voltage. So neither resonance nor weak driving are necessary to induce the transitions. And this is one of the main messages that I want to, to give you. So as I said, we are going to study a system of two qubits coupled to a, a single mode of a quantum resonator. So the Hamiltonian is this one. We have the Hamiltonian of the two qubits. We are going to drive the qubits through this, uh, I mean, epsilon uh, temporal dependence uh, with um, I mean the, the, the driving. It would be uh, an harmonic driving. And the qubits are coupled with, I mean, slightly, I'm going to, to stress in, in, in the next slides, the couplings could be, I mean, uh, more or less the same, but it's slightly different. I mean, it could be some experimental, I mean, difference <laughs> that would, it's going to be enough to, uh, um, for the protocol that we are going to, to, to consider. But as I said, the resonator is coupled to the environment. We are going to consider a, a thermal bus, okay? So the full Hamiltonian of the system uh, complete is the, this one that I uh, show you here. 
the Hamiltonian of the bath and some coupling uh, Hamiltonian between the, 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 the bath and the environment, okay? The usual way in which we describe the bath is the bath of uh, anomic spectral density, okay? And we are going to consider that, as said, the resonator is coupled to the bath through this operator that essentially is a, um, gives the photon losses in the resonator because this, this does not conserve the, the, the number of excitations. So uh, this is sort of more technical uh, uh, slide. I'm going only to say that the, 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 the strategy that you use to solve the open system dy dynamics is through the floquet born markov equation. The floquet born markov equation is an extension of the well-known born markov equation to deal with time-dependent uh, system that uh, depends uh, harmonically on time, okay? So instead of writing the equation in the standard, I mean, uh, instantaneous basis, we use the floquet basis, which is the natural basis to study time-dependent uh, periodic systems. So with this, we can uh, follow the dynamics of the reduced density matrix of the system, and also to, we can study the stationary state of the system. That's with, I mean, once we have the population on the stationary state, we are going to compute the quantities that, that we need. So first of all, as I said, we are uh, driving the, the system, the two qubit system through the energy spectrum, okay, with a landau center zuckerberg protocol. So the first thing that I want to mention is, I mean, which is the structure of this energy spectrum? Away from the body crossings, I mean, we have this structure in which we have uh, states which are essentially product states of the two qubits times the resonator, and we have a state, an entangled state with a given number of photons. These states are maximal entangled state that essentially away from the body crossings that I am, are showing here in the spectrum, do not, are not sensitive to the external uh, detuning in this case. So the idea is to identify what are the avoided crossings that can be reached when we put a driving on the system. So we put a driving, okay? We drive both qubits with the same protocol, okay? We set on this zero detuning and we drive with this signal both qubits. And as you see, as we fix the amplitude of the driving, we can reach these avoided crossings that are here. Each of these avoided crossings uh, are essentially a complicated bunch of uh, levels that uh, uh, interact, but we, have, uh, we can identify two different types of avoided crossings. We have large gaps, which are that these circles here, in which, I mean, these states are mixed, and they are mixings with an energy scale of the order of the number, I mean, goes to the square root of the number of photons in the, in the resonator times the coupling to the resonator. And I say both couplings are more or less the same, so the energy scale is this one. But it's a large energy scale for these gaps. But we have also a smaller gaps. And these smaller gaps essentially mix this entangled uh, C minus state with N photons with a linear combination of these two states. And these smaller energy gaps are of the uh, order of energy delta G, which is delta G, the difference in both the tuning. So we have these two energy scales, and this is interesting because as we have these two energy scales, we are going to have different Landau center type transitions through these uh, avoided crossings. So the protocol is essentially the following. We are going to drive the system, okay, starting from this initial state, we are applying this, this uh, uh, signal. We are going to excite the system from a given initial state, which is a separable state, okay? We are going to populate this entangled state with one photon, and then by a mechanism of photon loss, okay, we are going to populate the zero uh, photons C uh, minus state, a fully entangled two qubit state. But what is, I mean, relevant for this protocol is that, as I am going to show you, this state is not connected by landau center transitions to other states. Because if you manage to populate this state, but that this state is going to be uh, repopulated or depopulated by the driving, the, 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 the protocol fails. So here I'm showing you the interferometric patterns for the two relevant transitions that we are going to consider. As I say, we drive the system from the initial state to the state which is psi minus with one photon, 
And this is the landscape of the resonance. We observe resonances and, inter and integer numbers of the frequency uh, of, the, uh, of the cavity. Now the frequency of the cavity, as I saw you, is the energy scale that separates this uh, transition because it is the separation between the flat uh, levels. But uh, so now the energy condition for the Landau center stu cable resonances is this one. And the transitions has a width that is consistent with, I showed you before, the resonances are modulated by these vessel functions, but now the energy scale is not the delta that I showed you before, it's the, it's the delta G, which is the difference, the energy scale in the gaps, okay? This is essentially analogy with, uh, you know, for two level and no center transition. But what is interesting here that a, a curvature of the resonances of the order of this quantity, G1 times G2 over omega, is evident. And this curvature does not appear for two-level system. In two-level system, you have the spectroscopy, you have the flat resonances, at least modulated by the vessel functions, but you don't have this curvature. And well, we have shown that this curvature is due because we have a complicated uh, transition in, in which four levels are involved, and we can show explicitly that the curvature uh, arises for the uh, two-level uh, complicated avoided crossing that we have in the gap. But what's interesting here is, here is, I mean, along these resonances, you have the maximum transfer of population from the initial state to the state one psi minus. But on the other hand, what I'm showing you here on the right uh, is the transition from the uh, zero psi minus, which is the state that I'm going to reach, to other states. And what's interesting is that we can select regions, wide regions in parameter space in which this transition is on resonances, but this transition is out of resonances. So if we play with the external parameters, we can populate this state, for, exam for example, in this region, and we stabilize the attained state because this state cannot transit transitionate to other state. So this is essentially the, the, the trick that we are going to use to select region in the plane uh, amplitude and uh, frequency of the resonator, where a unitary resonances to the state one psi minus is uh, stimulated, but no unitary resonances involving uh, zero psi minus is so. So, I mean, only to flash, as I said, the curvature that we are uh, observing here is due to an effective four-level transitions. We can, I mean, uh, formally describe this in terms of effective two qubit uh, Hamiltonians, two qubit, uh, couple qubit Hamiltonians. Uh, I'm not going to get into the detail, but it's interesting that depending on the kind of transition that we want to study, we have to span the phase, no, the Hilbert space for this uh, effective Hamiltonian between uh, different states. But in both cases, for both transition, we obtain on one case, uh, effective Hamiltonian for a two couple qubits, but coupled by an energy scale, which is the energy scale, uh, uh, the frequency of the resonator, okay? And on the other side, we have a couple qubit coupled not through the, um, Linear, I mean, I mean linear because we are coupling through sigma z, which sigma z is the driving I mean, uh, uh, operator. And in this case, they are coupling transversally. So this kind of uh, Hamiltonians, we have been studying a lot during, I mean, the last couple of years to actually generate entanglement in between two qubits, but in not in circuit query architectures. And what is interesting is with these two effective Hamiltonians, we reproduce mainly the exact uh, simulations, numerical simulations from the resonance pattern. So, as I said, the dissipative dynamics is, I mean, uh, is the essential key ingredient to stabilize uh, entanglement, okay? So, the protocol, as I said, we promote a transition by driving from the initial state to the one psi minus state, and then by uh, uh, photon losses, the state decays, one photon is lost, and the state is stabilized in this uh, uh, fully entangled state in which as far as the driving is applied, this state is perfectly uh, stable. 
So this is uh, on the left, the steady state occupation of this uh, entangled state. I mean, we compute the steady state density matrix. We can compute the population. I can compute the steady state occupation. And as I show you, this is a map of the steady state population. You see that it reached values close to one, okay, in this parameter region, as I mentioned before, when we uh, stimulate a resonances to the one psi minus state. And as a measure of entanglement, you use the concurrence. I'm not going to give you the formal, I mean, for those we are not in, an, in the quantum <laughs> information community, but essentially it's a measure of entanglement that gives you one when, when the state is fully entangled and zero with the state are separable. So there is a perfect correlation. You gen we generate entanglement, fully entangled state. Or this, I mean, essentially this gives you essentially these two curves, the same information, the fully entangled state of fully con uh, concurrence equal to one. So the protocol that we had proposed enables the generation of uh, entangled bell state. Well, the temporal dynamics is uh, in a way cumbersome, but it's interesting to see that if we uh, start with an initial state, okay, we see that at the end, the uh, state with zero photons and uh, maximal bell entangled state is fully populated, okay? And also it's interesting in the, in the temporal dynamic that we see two, two type of uh, uh, oscillations. We have fast oscillations that are related to the time scale of the gap, I mean, that we have for these oscillations between uh, up, up and down, down states, okay? That are uh, oscillations that are of the order of 10, I mean, and the, the period is 10 times the period of the, of the driving, okay? So you see this fast oscillation. And also the state one psi minus, okay, is stimulated on time scale which are the order of the inverse of the energy scale for the gaps, which is delta G, which is a much, much lower energy scale, so the period is much larger, okay? You see the different time scales in these time dynamics. But I mean, at the end, we, are ma we managed to populate, okay, the uh, entangled state with uh, population one. So I cheat a little bit in this explanation because, I mean, for the formal calculations, we neglect at first order the, the qubit gap because in, in generally in, in we can consider that the gaps are much, much uh, lower than the, the tuning that we are, I mean, considering, but in a way, we, we did the numerics with uh, consider, uh, uh, considering uh, finite gaps, and these are the results. I mean, if we consider the typical gaps on sigma x on the uh, qubit, we see that the protocol is essentially, uh, I mean, uh, robust uh, against the change in the, in, the, in the qubit gap when the gap is on sigma x. Remember that we are coupling the qubit through sigma x, okay? So in a way, this renormalizes the coupling, but there's nothing. And in this case, if we consider a qubit with this gap in sigma y, which is, I mean, orthogonal to sigma x, we see a more, I mean, a, a intricate pattern of a, a generation of entanglement. But anyway, we can uh, find wide regions in a parameter space in which this protocol is robust. So to summarize, uh, we have proposed a new protocol, as far as we <laughs> understand, uh, to generate and stabilize a uh, bell state, which is essentially based on Dandau Senner's Fuchelberg uh, interferometry and dissipation, okay, through photon loss in the cavity in a circuit query architecture. So the qubits are driven with microwaves, not resonant, and beyond the uh, with driving regime explored in uh, previous protocols. And the dissipation, as I said, is mainly due to photon loss. So the requirement is to find uh, regions in a parameter space in which transitions to the one photon psi minus state is promoted and transitions out of the zero psi minus, psi minus uh, are, uh, the, don't, don't, don't overlap. So for this, we, we have a trade-off between the width of the resonances and the curvature of the resonances that I show in the spectrum. So this condition give you that the delta G, which is the difference between the couples, should be much more slower than G1 times G2 over omega. So I took this, I mean, from the uh, work of Walraff, um, I mean, many years ago, <laughs> in order to say, okay, this is a conservative mesh, uh, numbers that I'm going to give you, but with those numbers used in the, in the 
first, I mean, uh, experiment that I show you, uh, the condition is satisfied. So I think that it's going, I mean, it's feasible to, to, to implement this protocol. So for those of you that want more details, we have recently had this uh, publication. So thank you. I want to thank you all of you, my fundings and my place. These are the mountains of Bariloche. Thank you. Very nice, thank you. Thank you, Maria. So the floor is open for questions. Thank you, Maha, for a beautiful talk. I have two short questions. Uh, first of all, uh, did you try to look to the other side of a coin, namely Arabi oscillations in a system of two uh, qubits? Uh, uh, no, because I mean we are we are pursuing this. I mean, uh, Stuckelberg interferometry, trying to 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 go away from the resonant condition. Mm -hmm. Okay, but mm -hmm. we can do it. I mean, it's a different uh, I, strategy. I will explain but you in the coffee break why it's interesting. Of course, and of the course. second question: Did you try to look in your system of two qubits from the point of view of group theory? Because it's a SO4 <laughs> group, which is very yeah well yeah yeah community. yeah yeah. It has a beautiful, uh, this is a dynamical group, it's semi-simple, yeah. it has a hidden constant of motion, which say... Okay, uh, we didn't, I mean, I have a look at your paper, so you are going to explain to me what I'm going to do with the group theory. Because, I mean, you know, we have three and four levels avoided crossings, but the structure of the crossings is, a, a I mean, a little bit cumbersome, so we cannot, I mean, classify this kind of crossing, but it could be interesting to, to see what is effective transitions, at least analytically, between these levels. Yeah. Hi. You have said that you don't go up in your spectrum when you are doing all this protocol but, uh, uh, with your model, but what about if you take into account the, super, the full superconducting circuit and take into account that the qubit has higher energy state? Then I guess that you have to do this with a flash qubit that has a large anharmonicity because if you do it with a transmon, you are going to go up in the, yeah. the spec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we work we work a, a lot with I mean the, the device for the Chosepon flux qubit in order to investigate these land of center transitions. Okay. Um, so what we consider here is that we have a two qubits and we have this replica of the spectrum of the two qubits due to the uh, photons in the, in, the, in the cavity. But in a way, if you have a, a, a more I mean, complex uh, strategy, I think that we can uh, um, excite the, the qubit, but what we need is to excite the qubit to an entangled state with a fixed number of photons, okay? And then if relaxation is only due to Photon loss. I think that the mechanism is robust, but I mean, I, I don't, I don't see any um, any difference. I mean, you are going to have different energy scales, but the the trick here is to have a lowest energy scale that is given by the difference in the coupling of the qubits to the gap to the to the resonator. Okay, you are going to have other energy scales. Okay, but the, mostly the Landau center transitions are going to be dominated by these small gaps. So if you have larger gaps, maybe the situation is uh, rather complicated, but I think. Well, yes, no. The okay, we can discuss if you want later some details. Maybe I'm not catching what you are going to. Uh, I have a practical question. Is it very important that the drive of the two qubits are perfectly in phase? No, no. Actually, actually we have, we have explored with different detunings. Actually, I mean, instead of being in phase, we, we, we move one of the qubits from, I mean, to a detuning, uh, I mean, positive and the other a little bit. And there is a range of detuning in which the protocol uh, still uh, works. Okay, it, the, the, the spectrum is much rather involved because it's not so symmetric. You have different slopes. I mean, if you have different qubits, but I mean, this is the first and easy, but I think that we can explore, yeah, those attempts. All right, if there are no more questions, then let's thank Maria again. We started a bit late and we ran a bit uh, over time, so the coffee break would like to...